Hello and welcome back to ELT React, where we as English language teaching professionals react to the good, the bad, the ugly of the teaching clips on the internet. We are looking today at a follow up to our audio lingual method video. We're looking to react to some classes uh, of you teachers out there teaching audio lingual. So before we go into that, let's do some introductions. I'm Neil, a team teacher. Hello everybody, it's Professor Rich. Okay, today Rich, we're following up on the ALM, the Army Method, the New Key Method, the Audio Lingual Method, all these different words and terms for it. And we're going to be looking at some teacher posted clips. We've got uh, a clip that I think is a very typical clip of uh, an ALM class and also a clip that I think is probably a little bit more of a, a representation of where you can kind of go with ALM. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm quite excited actually. People still using audio lingual method in this decade, I've got to say. And even they've got, the, they've got the guts to upload it to the internet so ruffians like me and you can get a hold of it and <laughs> rip it to shreds. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm excited about this. I think it will be kind of fun. And uh, um, it, the the first the first clip is got this this is this, this wonderful trend that I found with ALM. Um, I I want to bring up before we jump into it because it's it, I want to point out that this is that when I was doing research and trying to find clips, this came up a lot. Uh, so remember when we did the methodology video, um, the guy did the bow tie. You know, like the here's the bow tie for the salesman, and um, then the role he's got the yeah, bow tie yeah. on the head to represent the woman to because he's doing two different characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't do that nowadays. What they do is they have representation, so people have like <laughs> sock puppets and uh, <laughs> and uh, like ah. little cards of people and stuff like this. Is this person talking now? This is this person yeah. talking. <laughs> So forewarned, uh, forewarned, yeah. Rich. Yeah, well, you know, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> uh, fantastic, I guess. Uh, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to give a balanced and objective analysis. Hopefully we won't get anyone freaking out and writing about our unprofessional analysis underneath this video. <laughs> we've had in the past. Um, or um, or maybe they'll get in touch with us and come on the show like uh, like the lovely Lucy did. Um, so yeah, hey guys, if you're watching this and this is your class, and you know you fancy coming on the show, just drop us a message. We're very open to it. Elt under the covers gmail dot com. We'd love to talk to you about your teaching approach and your ideas on methodology and how you make those damn sock puppets. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that like people. People are still teaching this method today. I mean, you just, you'd just think that everyone would just default to CLT, wouldn't you? But I, get, I, wonder, I kind of wonder how people get into it. I mean, I guess there's two possible routes, isn't there? One is that you sort of, you're a real methodology fiend and you dive into them and you're like, you know what, that's the methodology for me. Mm -hmm. And the other one is, an is probably the more likely option, that it's an institutional thing. So it's just people who happen to work for an institution who've actually been doing audio linguistic method for like the past 50 years. Yeah. And you've got there is just like, look, this is what works. This is what sells. This is what the students want. I'm not going to like change everything now, you know? <laughs> so, well, because yeah. it's so rigid, I think that there's a lot, there's a lot of scope for the education industry to come up with proprietary materials for it. So I can, oh, yeah. I can see that, that being carried through, do you know, like in the same way that direct methods being carried through in right. varieties by Berlitz in lingua and Callum right. method. Yeah. Yeah. And then I guess you kind of get this print and go style situation where it's like, you know, train up the teachers in a two week course, print and off they go. Yep. You know, yeah, uh, yeah, I guess there is that. All right, let's uh, see where this goes. Good morning, class. I'm going to give a dialogue today, and I want you listening carefully, but not talking, please. <laughs> Two people are walking along. Did she just say no talking, please? They're adults. <laughs> 
I love, I love, I love how she just enters. She enters in as well. Like that was that was a key part. That was a key part. They couldn't start filming before she. You know, like if she was already stood there, then how would people know that she entered? The room? Yeah, yeah. They could have cut that, couldn't they? Uh, okay. So all right, she's putting on a little bit of a show for the camera, I guess. Yeah. can't believe that she's like she's done it like so like serious and now she's got the self she's still doing it serious hello how are you i'm fine thank you how are you yeah blah 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 you know it's like she's not smiling she's not having fun with it she's just doing it like Come on, focus everybody. No talking. This is very, this off we go with the sock puppets. I love how serious it is. Um, although it does remind me of like, um, what is it, Mr. Fleebles in Red Dwarf? Do you know when Rimmer goes a bit nuts and he's got the <laughs> penguin? <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Imagine watching this without any sound. You'd be like, or any context. This woman is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how she does with it, though. And how the yeah. students respond. I am going to the post office. Okay. Now, listen again. But carefully. Hello, Bill. Hello, Liz. How are you? Fine, thanks. And you? Fine. Where are you going? I am going to the post office. Okay. Now, we will repeat it. We will about this before haven't we the audio lingual method it, it lends itself to stagnant synthetic conversations here we have some horribly unnatural language i am no, going to the post yeah. office yeah that's the worst part for me it, it's so grating i mean you know sure synthetic conversations it, it, it's part of the course with audio lingual method but really the the synthetic pronunciation and the way that speech is one of the, I think, probably one of the worst examples that we've had. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we've had examples that are this bad, I think, before. Uh, but yeah, she's not, she's not as good as uh, as vacuum salesman guy is she, and and he wasn't good, but at least he had some intonation that wasn't good intonation. It was it was over the top, inaccurate intonation. Uh, but yeah, this is just. Just kind of dire, really, isn't it? Yeah. Are, they, are these are they are they Brazilian students or Portuguese? They're one or the other, aren't they? I have no the idea. The accent. I have no accent idea. I I th I was like going that. with Eastern European, but I don't know. Really? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Come here. Post office. Post office. To the post office. To the post office. Going to the post office. Going to the post office. You know what's funny about that is she's doing a technique which is actually quite a good technique when used correctly called back chaining mm -hmm. and I don't think we've actually seen much of it before I don't think I'm not sure if we've ever seen it before on the channel mm -hmm. but it's a quite a respected technique for for getting people to produce uh, a phrase like when you're producing a, uh, getting them to produce a whole phrase rather than giving them the whole phrase like I'm gonna go to the post office today you just start with today Everyone says today, and then the post office today. Then they say that. Going to go to the post office today, and then finally, I'm going to go to the post office today. So you back ch you back chain it. So you, you start at the you, back. You start you're, right. Okay. Basically, you're drilling a phrase, but you're starting at the back, and then you drill like a bit more and a bit more, a bit more until you drill the whole phrase, right? But you have to do it naturally, though. You know, post office, post office. 
Gonna go to the post office. Gonna go to the post office. I'm gonna go to the post office. Gonna, right, so you, gonna, you build it up. <clears throat> but she did that, she just, you know, so someone's told her, I think, said like, hey, back chaining, but uh, unfortunately it didn't come with the kind of natural um, pronunciation that we hoped for. European thing. I am going to the post office. I am going to the post office. Okay. Just give me a headache. This. Uh, let's see where she goes now. Next. <laughs> Are they reading from something? I have some pictures today for you. Um, it's a good question. It looked like he might have been, but I yeah. Don't, I don't... Oh, oh. Good job. Yeah, he's got like a blue sheet of paper in front of him. I don't know why they would do that though. Doesn't that it's... go against the methodology? Yeah. <clears throat> um, also, um, this teacher really needs to like learn that treating your students with a person-to-person -person relationship rather than a teacher-to-student relationship i mean honestly the way that she speaks to them it's quite maybe gruff it's a, maybe it's a cultural thing she's like okay girls will be liz and boy you will be bill okay go <laughs> what you don't need to speak to them like that it's like all right uh you guys can be liz for this one and you be bill you know i don't know maybe it's a cultural thing but to me, it just seems like she's like very abrupt and uh, yeah, coarse. Well, she's like she's she she thinks she's like you know sergeant at arms or something. You know, it was like military. Language. Well, it is the army yeah, method. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, maybe it come, maybe it goes with the territory. I have some pictures today for you. I am going to the post office. I am going to the post office. I am going, going to, to the bank. Okay. I am going to the cafe. I am going to the pharmacy. She is going, going to, to the pharmacy. He is, is going, going to the post office. We were, we were almost at the stage where she was doing some controlled practice there. I was quite excited. I think the only thing that was needed was like some picture reference that she could point to and then they would say it. So like there's a picture of a boy, a picture of a girl, a picture of a group of people, you know, and we just, you know, he's going, she's going, they're going, you know, and she could point to that picture and then point to the location. Mm -hmm. She's going to the post office. He's going to the park. You know, and she wouldn't have to say anything. She just point to the picture of him, her, or them, and then she point to the picture of the post office or the bank or whatever, mm -hmm. and they could have been saying it. Mm -hmm. Now that's dropping, leaving aside the fact that the fact that this is so synthetic is driving me crazy. This, this, ugh. people need to get this right with audio lingualism as well. It's got to be a natural drill, otherwise you're wasting people's time. You're drilling something which doesn't exist, which people don't actually say. It's you know. true. So it's true. So we gotta. It's gotta be. You know, he's going. He's go, He's gonna go. I would say gonna go rather than going. But okay, you can say he's going. He's going to the post office. She's going to the park. He's going to the. You know, it could be a nice little control practice activity. She didn't do it. She didn't do it. She just said he, and then they said is going to the, and she said I'm going to the. Okay, it's kind of a weird hybrid like semi control practice and she's moved on already 
to she wants me to form the question okay he's going to the back okay or she is going to the cafe and you may question by is she going to the cafe let's she is going to the pharmacy is she, is she going going to... what's the point of the pictures if she's just going to say it anyway Surely the point of the pictures is that she doesn't have to say it. She just holds up the picture and they say it. Yeah, or she holds up the picture and she says a pronoun. A he, she, we, I. Or and something. That, yeah. Or something. I mean, I, I would argue nothing. He... You know, just, just, I mean, get the pictures. Yeah, I guess I guess she could do that. You know, yeah, she could say he, she, or I. But, I mean, yeah. So what are they? what's she doing now? She's showing them a picture. She says he... Is going to the post office, and then all they have to do is invert the subject and the and the and the auxiliary, and say, uh, "Is he going to the post office?" Well, that's all they have to do. Is that really that beneficial? Is that really a good use of time in the class? This is bad, Neil. <laughs> I thought you'd like it. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Is she going to the post office? Oh. Okay. Is she going to the cafe? No. no. She isn't going to the cafe. Okay. She didn't instruct them on that though. Yeah. I think the teacher just made a mistake and they just responded in a good way. <laughs> but okay. Well done. No, we will try and realize. Can we stop? Can we stop? It, the sound on this is, is really getting to me as well, not just the content. Um, yeah. I... Did she say, I am going to the cafe, I need a little cafe? Yeah. Like cafe. I'm going to the coffee. cafe so I can buy a little cafe next door. <laughs> they're gonna go purchase the cafe that they're going to look at my sexy body this is why we get cut told our analysis isn't professional isn't it yeah this is really um, um so yeah I mean, i'm inspired by mike myers okay i actually i feel like it it could have been it could have been a decent class you know there's a lot to work with with the audio lingual method with um doing the, the going to structure and mixing it around you know because what she was doing what she was doing with like oh now we do now we practice you know the the first person and then they're going oh i'm going to go to and a whole bunch of different places then we'll you inject a couple of different persons he she we are they practice that okay and then you know switch it over to doing questions doing negatives doing double negatives the question tags uh you, you could you could fill an hour or at least half an hour with that and you know, if you let, if you do your suggestions and just kind of hold up flashcards, maybe some, you know, like representations of different persons, then, you know, you wouldn't have to do much talking and they'd be a lot more, you know, like student, um, student practice, maybe even uncontrolled student practice. But I don't think the method lends to freer practice. I think it's more controlled. I think it lends to tyrannical teachers that uh, <laughs> treat treat their yeah. students <clears throat> like maybe that's, subjects. <clears throat> maybe that's why it works. Wh maybe that's why it works really well as just a recorded tape. You know, because yeah, that's kind of what the role the teacher's doing here. Uh, she's just being the recorded tape, but she's also kind of trying to force them to to do it. 
Yeah, because uh, what's we, what's we, the role? Are we, jump, are we jumping out of this one? I think I think so. I don't think there's much there. more that we can say from this. Do you think? Do you want to keep uh, subjugating yourself? <laughs> I just want. I, I just want to know what she's. What's all this? What's all this stuff on the board? Oh, she's going to teach that. <laughs> That's so tangential, isn't it? I'm gonna to go to the supermarket and buy some apples and banana. Oh, fucking break! Oh my god! Yeah, so that was fairly ah. that was fairly typical of what I saw out there for representations right. of ALM. Um, okay. I, I especially like the sock puppets and how she used them. She's done these sock puppet things, used them, takes them off after she does the example, and then just nominates people instead of using the the sock puppets to like represent, you know, okay, you're this one, you're this turn to talk, now you're Bob, Bill, you're this turn to talk, that was it. Mm. It, it was... It was a weird. If you're gonna use, yeah, it was the, just like a. To, it was like a token sock pu sock puppet, <laughs> wasn't it? Which is really hard to think. You know, you had to say that out loud. So we've just observed a teaching class where they had token sock puppets. <laughs> Were they anything to do with the teaching? <laughs> She's just not really. <laughs> she just wanted to get in her sock pu sock puppet segment, so you can get that tick on the observation form. Ooh, sock puppets, well done, tick. Okay. <laughs> what what oh, look, what's got, that a covered under? She did a game at the end as well. A game at the end, tick. <laughs> okay, so we have a, another clip here, which the guy does something a little bit different, um, and hopefully. This is a, a better representation of what you can do with ALM. <laughs> Confidence. Okay, um, I'm going to ask you some questions, and I would like you to respond by saying, I don't know, I wonder, can you tell me, or I can't remember. Okay, so let's start with the car. Um, where does John live? Uh, I can't remember where John lives. Thank you. Um, where is Peter from? Can you tell me where is, uh, can you tell me Peter where is from? You want to try that again? Can you tell me Peter where, where Peter is from? Where Peter is from? Another one. What is John's phone number? Uh, can you tell me, uh, uh what is phone number? What John's phone number can you tell is? Me what John's phone number is? Good. Where is the post office? Uh, I wonder where the Thank you. How far is it to New York? I don't know how far to... How far it is? How far it is. To New York. Very good. Um, where is John's book? I don't know uh, where John's book is. Thank you. Um, what kind of watch does he have? Um, can you tell me what kind of watch? Very good. What is Peter's favorite color? I don't know uh, what uh, Peter's favorite color is. Good. How long has Jim been married? Do you want to pause it for a second? Oh, yeah. So, so this one, he he's got he's going around. Um, it's more the idea that I like than the actual um the yeah, doing the doing of it um so if he's got those structures i like the idea of changing the question and you know they have to fill in a different few different blanks with the structure that they're given i think one of the main problems that he's he's got though with this is they're obviously not comfortable enough with the structures so they should have they should have already done some pre 
pre-loading before this of just practicing those with the same question going over it you know like like the uh, an audio tape or something like that like Pilmsler or something and then when they come into class he's helping them practice that structure but you know using different questions or different you know like pronouns that they have to switch out or whatever but um that's not what's happening but i you know i think he's that intention that he has with what he's doing is is good i'm not sure how well it works with such a large class though at the pace that he's going all right so i mean first of all it's not the worst activity that we've seen in the world mm -hmm. but i've got a few questions about this um first of all i mean the thing about the big class i actually think i actually think it does work as a controlled practice kind of because I think people are doing it in their heads even when they're not on the spot. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why you've seen them get better. Like the first couple of people kind of struggled a bit and now they're kind of better at it because they've been doing it. Okay. And they're getting the idea together. So I think that actually does work. That's the, that's the kind of demand high theory. Okay. But well, there's a few things that confuse me. One is, is this, is this actually all good lingualism? Because it looks kind of like direct method to me. So with the direct method, it's it's more like call and response in that you are going through questions and you're asking them and they they are to give you back the the complete answer um and if they don't you feed that to them now i it that's for me the direct method and the audio lingual method i think is is very similar if if not the same except often it's more f phrasal longer sentences and stuff but um yeah right okay i don't think that really answers your yeah, question very yeah, well I was, yeah, <laughs> uh, no i was i was really hoping to get like something with a bit more flexibility because i think that's where i, I think that's as, as flexible you'll get go. with it that that's my point is i think that's as flexible as you get with that because he's probably he's got these structures and now he's just introducing new aspects that they have to fit into the structures that they've memorized or right been given yeah you see i kind of envision doing this with like you know you get a structure like uh i'm gonna go i'm gonna go to the shops because uh i want to buy some bread okay get something like that and then make it so shops is replaceable and um, the, maybe even the want is replaceable somehow. So you'd have different pictures represent different kind of verbs. And then obviously the bread is replaceable. And then go and then do some flexibility with that and introduce like some other structures. Like he had, he had four different structures. I liked that. So we've got like four different structures mm -hmm. uh, and we have these substitutions which fit in them in different ways, you know, and you're kind of saying, right, okay, uh, so now, and you point at like the park and, you know, uh, you point at um, uh, like someone running, you know, oh, I'm going to go to the park because I want to go for a run, whatever. Right. Okay, then you point to the shops and you point to... Uh, the you know buying a car or whatever and, and and do it like that and just have people producing those and then mess around with the forms you know what's the question of it you know oh what do you want to do today I don't, I don't know. it's difficult to do it's difficult i can see why they're so limited in their flexibility you can see what you'd want to do with it you know you'd want it to be like super flexible somehow mm -hmm. but <clears throat> i think but that's not it's really it's not happening a method to itself in a classroom i would say it's a controlled practice activity that you could do in a clt class like right. you could literally just yeah. give students a whole bunch of different <clears throat> of flash cards you've already practiced the structure and then you set them into pairs and you know they they have to whip out the flash cards and uh, these flash cards are probably yeah. from vocabulary they used in the previous lesson or the past lesson and they've just now got to integrate that into this structure yeah. and then they they practice that and then they have to come up with their own examples uh, for a free practice activity yeah. but yeah. as a whole method 
I mean, uh, that... following with that rigidity, like in the first clip, it it feels like what is the point of the teacher? That's always always the thing with the direct method and audio lingual method that I have is. Are they an, a teacher or are they just uh, an instructor or a a walking talking yeah. tape yeah. player? That's that's probably why I found it qu worked quite well with translation because then you get the flexibility, don't you? You know, as soon as you say like, and and in Spanish, how would you say, "Excuse me, sir, I want to take the dog for a walk." then you have like a huge amount of flexibility where they have to think, oh God, how would I say that in Spanish? You know, uh, per perdona, uh, quiero, you know, it's like, it, and, and, and that I think actually did work to get a basic grasp of Spanish, mm -hmm. but you need the translation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people will say it's a bad idea because it encourages, um, you know, it encourages translation which I don't think is a problem. I think encouraging word-to-word -word translation is, is not good, which I think those courses that we did, uh, Pimsleur and stuff, they, they do encourage word-to-word -word translation. But Michelle Thomas doesn't, does he? No. The way that he te teaches, he kind of points out that, uh, he, he always points out the phrases, you know, this is this phrase, you know, uh, and he's very good at doing that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you can do it um, in that way, but I think the, the translation, I think, for me, so I, I would say I, I don't I don't see a lot to be taken from audio lingualism in its pure form, but the kind of hybrid audio lingualism translation method, um, mm. as used by Michelle Thomas, for example, I think um, I think there's something to be said for that. I think I think it is actually quite a good method, getting from zero to to one, and I think it's quite good as a product as well. Mm -hmm. I do think it's a worthwhile audio product and maybe it lends itself better to a product than a class because mm. as we've seen, it kind of turns the teachers into these sort of drill sergeants, which, you know, I mean, you've got some experience with that because you're direct method stuff, but yeah. it's not, it's not the best. It's not a very comfortable position to be in even as a teacher and as a student, I don't know, maybe some students like it. Uh, I, I think they do because they is kind of, you know, maybe it's those people that aren't very disciplined to actually do uh, an audio book, the, you know, an audio course themselves. So they need to do it in the classroom, but they're, they're not comfortable with, you know, the freer communicative teaching uh, classroom and they want something that more fits their idea of what a classroom should look like which would be something like this my, my biggest gripe that I have when I've been looking through all these examples of direct method and um, audio lingual especially the audio lingual is how slow it is like I uh, when I was doing direct method it was so fast the classes flew by for everyone because it's or it's the language is not synthetic at all in fact it's it's maybe a little t bit too sped up you know like where are you going today where are you going today i'm going to 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 the shop i'm going to the shop i'm going to where are you going today where's she where's she going today where's she going today <laughs> yeah and, and you don't yeah, know right. whenever you don't know when uh, because it were like the class is set up in a like a a circle around the 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 teacher you don't ever know where you're going to be called upon like he was going round one by one so everyone was prepared and that i i don't feel like this is the point of something like audio lingual or direct method is you you want to be practicing it in a natural way you want to be not thinking about it and then being either fed to you or get to the point where you've practiced it so much that you can respond to the questions without much thought and that's kind of it's kind of like uh synthetic uh fluency in a way mm -hmm. yeah but I, I can't seem to find an example of that <laughs> unfortunately of someone doing it of someone doing it's you know that well you know uh how ha having right. yeah having everyone on on their toes and uh they're firing out questions that's isn't it because i mean Presumably, Callan School in Valencia are still doing it, you know, the way that the way that they did it before, right? 
So. Yeah, well, well this was ALM today, and you know, people watching, keep keep a lookout because we are looking at all the big direct stroke ALM uh, audio course producers like Callan, um, in Lingua Berlitz, you know, the ones that do in course and they have their own products as well. So we can maybe we'll maybe see something from them, um, but. Uh, You'll just have to subscribe and tick the bell to make sure that you see when those videos come out. Mm. Do you have any final yeah. thoughts that you want to leave? Leave us with. Yeah, I think overall with the audio lingual lingual method, ALM, um, Nuki Army we're method. The only people who call it that. There's no one else calls it that. Um, <laughs> I I think overall I've been disappointed with seeing how it is with a teacher um given that i did get something out of it myself when i was learning spanish yeah um, and i did six months of training with it and i thought to be honest i can't imagine doing much more productive stuff than i than i did during that time i mean we're in the uk still so there wasn't really much ch opportunity to have kind of fluency based classes mm -hmm. i didn't have the money for community language classes and i didn't have the level for it anyway really i mean it would have been absolute basic stuff i would have needed a great teacher and i, I very much doubt that the the, the 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 spanish language teaching was kind of that 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 great at the time mm -hmm. so i would have just we would have just been sat there learning like you know conjugations of ser and stuff like that and you could do that at home just useless just really slow stuff yeah you can do it at home so um yeah i actually think it worked quite well for me for, for the first six months and it's been pretty disappointing seeing kind of how it's generally implemented in a classroom and i don't think that we've really got the answers for what to do with it either but um i i, I don't really i don't think too much of it and I don't think there's a great deal you can take from it other than I think you probably nailed it when you said it seems like a controlled practice activity mm -hmm. that's a little bit deficient but has maybe some things to say for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's it. I think it's a I think that's exactly it. And you could probably design some kind of controlled practice activity along these lines that would function quite well in a, in in a broader communicative language class. Uh, other than that, don't really have a great deal to say about it. Yeah. But if anyone does want to start learning like a new language, then, you know, I would rec I would say, um, you know, for a lot of people spending there's 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 worse ways you can spend your time than spending six months uh, doing an audio lingu linguistic um, like recording just to get yourself going. OK, and so the, the one which was I'm going to give you know, a question here made in like the 1960s or something. You've you've yeah. you've got. $250, something like that, Do you, and you want to learn a new language, do you buy the audio course, the basic audio course from, you know, some company, or do you spend $250 on getting a teacher to bring you up to, like, A1? It's a spicy question. Like, would you, would you, would you be able, for, for 250 dollars <clears throat> or say just 250 yeah. quid would with the rate that you charge would you be able to get that person to like like a an a1 level or something like that for how how far could you well, get them with that amount see, of money the, the thing is <laughs> oh. it's a slightly different question that because mm. initially you were saying should i spend my money on getting a teacher or not but then if you're asking about whether someone should spend money on me as when you think you've got the answers i change the questions i don't want to <laughs> float, float my own boat too much but um you know at this stage in my career of of, of te doing this for almost 15 years it does get to the stage where you know when a student comes to me now i see myself more as you know almost like a doctor it's like you diagnose the issues they have mm -hmm. and you offer them solutions. It's not like, like, oh, we're going to go through the present perfect or whatever. I mean, that, that, that can be part of it as well. Yeah. But the primary aim is to identify um, habits and activities and things that that student can do to improve. 
So it may well be that a student in that situation who came to me uh, with 250 quids worth of classes, um, which wouldn't get you that many classes, to be honest, but, um, but someone came to me, what would it be? It would be about 11 or 12 classes. So someone would come to me, they'd get 11 or 12 one-hour classes, and in the first class, if I saw that their English was really basic, yeah. like if someone came in and literally they're like, you know, hello, uh, and they don't understand anything, blah, 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 it might be possible that, the, the, that my doctor's diagnosis might be do this audio linguistic course and come oh. back in six months. Or um, certainly one option would be go through the entire Duolingo catalog. And I know that's something that we're going to cover in future, but that's free. So, you know, right. I might say to them, right, what you need, you need everything. You need <laughs> basic vocabulary. You need, you need to just learn some basic English. And your time would be best sent, spent taking a six-month break, and we'll do the rest of our 11 classes at the end of that. And I want you to go through Duolingo and, and do this audio linguistic course, and I'll um, email you every couple of weeks to check that you're keeping up with that and making progress. Mm. Because if you, because the only way that we're continuing with this is if you go, if, if you do that. Right. Um, so that might be the diagnosis. So, so the kind of the two things sort of come together a little bit. Mm. Um, and if it really has to be one or the other. I mean, honestly, um, if, you've got, if you're a little bit tech savvy, I think you can find ways of getting those courses without paying £250 for them. The, the, re, the recorded audio linguistic courses, that is. Um, so so there's, I guess there's something to be said for that. Um, and on the other hand, if money isn't a massive issue, then, well, the question doesn't make any sense anyway, does it? But additionally, you know, we have those but, courses, and that, but you also have YouTube, and you have people like English with Lucy that can, yeah. you know, get you some basic sense. I don't, I, don't, I, I don't think there's a lot of good st stuff for beginners on YouTube and I don't think there ever will be because I don't think that the kind of teaching that needs to happen would ever uh, um, take off in the algorithm because I don't, uh, because people wouldn't, wouldn't realize it's, it's the best way of learning. And to be honest, I do think that when you're an absolute <clears throat> beginner in a language, a lot of it is on you. You know, it's not really about sitting in a room with a guy with a chalkboard giving you the conjugations of B or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot, there's a lot of work to be done yourself. You can work with a community of language teacher, but it makes a lot more sense to start at like A1 at least, a good A1, you know? Mm -hmm. Someone's done A1. They, under, they know what the word walk is. They know what the regular past is. You know, they at least know it. They might not have good practice at it, but they at least know it. And audio an audiolingual audio course will get you there mm. you know it'll get you to the point where you know because you know you did it you remember when we did mm -hmm. the spanish you know mm. you learn trabajar mm. how else would you have learned trabajar other than that audio linguistic course what well, someone tells you it and then you kind of forget it or whatever you know we, we learn those ver those those verbs ir trabajar estar ser the kind of basic stuff mm -hmm. you have to learn them one way or another and i think sitting in a class and someone says by the way the way we say work in Spanish is trabajar. I just don't think that's great input. I think, um, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the way that community of language teaching works, we could have mentioned this in our community of language teaching video, that it kind of does make an assumption about there being some sort of a base there. Mm -hmm. And although there are ways of doing classes from absolutely nothing, mm -hmm. and I've seen it, I just don't think it's the most efficient use of time. Mm -hmm. Ma like... People's time is expensive, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, you, the, the money you pay for a teacher, it might not be that much compared to what you'd pay for a, a physiotherapist or a psychologist or a, um, whatever, or some other kind of specialist, a solicitor. Um, but, it, but it is still quite a lot of money because you're paying for a person and people's time is always expensive. Mm -hmm. So, you know, is that the best way of spending your time and money when really what you should be doing at an absolute beginner level is just sitting down with yourself and, 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 and learning stuff. And for me, audio linguistic recordings are a good way of doing that. I think that's, that's, that's my kind of summary there. It's, it's possible that, you know, uh, to be honest, I, I haven't really, I haven't done a lot of this absolute beginner kind of stuff because there's not a lot of absolute beginners that exist in English. And, um, 
you know, I've, uh, I've only kind of really learned Spanish as a second language myself. So I only did it once and I did it with audiolingualism and it worked. Um, it's possible that things like Duolingo would also work. I suspect that they probably would. Um, but I, I like the fact that audiolingualism encourages you to speak and encourages you to speak with different forms and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Okay, yeah. But beyond that, I don't think it has a lot of utility and I don't think... I think doing it in the classroom just takes away from all its advantages. The whole point is like, oh, we can do it as a recorded audio so we're not wasting anyone's time. But if you're doing it in the classroom, then, well, suddenly you're back to it being a class. And I think if you are in the classroom, I think you might as well be doing a, some sort of community language teaching or some other method. Um, the, what, what's the one with the sticks, the silent way kind of thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, something like that would be, could be interesting as well. Yeah, actually, I could see how someone could interpret that as audio lingual or direct method because it's... But it's just the students are producing the English, but it's from the assumption that they have a base level or something like that. I think that's one of the, I think you've raised a lot of interesting points and I'd love to get some comments, uh, especially about those points from viewers and teachers that are, have been watching this. Um, one of the things that I got from that is, you know, very early on when you're learning English, it, it is heavily on the, the, the learner. So, you know, like a role of a teacher is maybe not so much to teach, but to coach, you know, give them advice on, you know, like things that they might get stuck on and where to, to begin and before moving into the communicative language classroom. Uh, and additionally, what was my other point? Was teaching methodology, because we've, we've covered a lot now, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be done by a teacher, which is something that I've not really thought about as much, but there's, we've covered all these te teaching methodologies under the assumption, assumption in my head that these would be something that a teacher would use in class. But, you know, we know a lot of learners of English learn English outside of the classroom. So, you know, what would be the teaching methodology methodology you would use? You certainly wouldn't use, uh, you know, community language learning um, because, you know, who's going to translate for you and stuff like that. So it makes sense that you would go to audio lingual method because it lends itself well to that. And I, I think that's a good point. We're, you're going to be taught and you're going to learn in different ways in different situations. So I think one of the things I've got to take from this going forward is when we're thinking about teaching methodology, it's well, what, is the, what is the teaching that I'm doing and what's the best method I can use from this toolbox that I have to, you know, to, to help the person learn and you know, that's a great point that you made. If someone is, if someone has a limited budget uh, and no English, then you would suggest to them, rightly so, well, why don't you just do some audio lingual, do some audio courses, do Duolingo. Uh, you've, yeah. you've, you've yeah. taught because you've given, you've matched them to the best method. You've, you've thought about the different methodologies that could be implemented for them, for their time, their budget, their level, and you've given your best suggestion. And I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. And it's a different mindset mm. to what many teachers would think, where they would just kind of take it on themselves and be like, no, I can do this. But like, well, that's not the point. It's the point of being a teacher is finding the best way for that, the student given their situation and yeah i think what you what you did was was correct it makes sense mm. it's time of you it, it's important yeah, that, it, it, that we recognize it, it as is. teachers that we put that put that ego aside yeah and I, I feel like at some point we could probably come back to this analogy we could probably do a whole podcast on it on the analogy of the sort of teacher as a as a doctor 
your kind of diet. Maybe doctor isn't quite the right word because we don't want to see it as like, you know, compare like language learning to having a medical problem. <laughs> but, um, something like that, like maybe personal trainer or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to see ourselves in a bit that way. We're not coming in as an encyclopedia of grammar who wants to, you know, teach people all these points. That is, that's just an element of a language teacher. It's not necessarily the most important one. It's much more about um, mindset and um, pointing people in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And constantly, I mean, you know, people might say, oh, well, that'll just mean that it's just one class and then off they go and they'll go in the right direction. Uh, th no, that's not how it works. I mean, otherwise, um, you know, uh, psychologists, uh, psych psychotherapists wouldn't make much money, would they? Because they just have one session and then people would go off and cure all their problems. It doesn't quite work like that, does it? Yeah. So it's the same thing as being a teacher. And I, I take this approach with all my students and I always, I'm always going back to the, you know, going back to the, oh, have you been doing your vocabulary notes? You know, have you been doing trying shadowing? How about we try this? Oh, you've been reading your book, haven't you? Oh, you haven't for ages because you don't like reading. Then why are you doing it? Forget it. Let's find something else. Oh, how about watching this program with subtitles on? You know, it's it's all that, and I think that's that's what modern language teachers, um, and maybe even just modern teachers in general, should be, more mm. like facilitators that kind of guide students to discover their own autonomous ways of getting to the place they want to get to. I think that's a, a great Which point. Which lingualism does not enable. <laughs> no, it does not. It does not. It's very much, I teach you this now. Now you are taught. Have a nice day. <laughs> Give me money. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, I, I, I really do agree with you. And I think there's a, there's a big video um discussion in that um like i said what if you're watching this and you have some comments please let us know uh and remind us to cover these topics uh because we've got an ever-growing list and we never seem to get around to many of the things on there so it really is down to you to demand high from us and uh we'll, we will get on to the videos if you're looking for more information uh, from myself, uh, you can go to teamteacherchina.com. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of materials, PowerPoints that you can use instantly in the classroom. We've got a Team Teacher China YouTube channel where we have videos teaching you how to use those uh, materials. Team Teacher English where we put those materials into a video form for self-study. And Team Teacher Baby where I take my experience as a teacher and put that into parenting. And go to YouTube the Conference Professor or Rich to see some English teaching. You can catch me weekly live streams on Oxford Online English YouTube channel. Oh, and also you can you can do a YouTube search for POG Space UK and you would get my alpha version of my new gaming channel, which actually just have some trial content on there at the moment. You can email us here at ELT under the covers at gmail.com if you have anything you'd like to contribute to the show. Smash that like button, share and subscribe. And, and watch 100% of the video and don't exactly. click off. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.